Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump reversed his position on cannabis once again late October, saying that legalization should be up to the states. But even if he had come out in favor of ending federal cannabis prohibition or legalizing all drugs, Trump's divisive, fear-based comments and policies in other areas make it impossible to support him. Now that Trump will almost certainly win the GOP presidential nomination, as he continues to lead in state and national polls by large margins, it's more important than ever for the rational and humane to speak out against Trump's politics of fear, division, and hate. At first, it may have been easy to brush Trump off as an idiotic egomaniac who isn't serious about running for president. We are led by very, very stupid people. I will be the greatest jobs president that God ever created. We will have so much winning if I get elected that you may get bored with winning. Believe me. I'm on more covers than any supermodel in history. Can you believe it? No, can you believe it? But Trump quickly proved that he's more than just an idiot. He's an idiot with no qualms about playing to the right wing's worst instincts and fears. He's willing to turn Americans against each other by demonizing whatever group is most convenient. First, he called for millions of Hispanic immigrants to be deported and a wall to be built on the U.S.-Mexico border. When do we beat Mexico at the border? They're laughing at us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. Somehow, this wasn't inflammatory enough for him to be considered more than a joke. Then Trump moved his sights to Muslims. Even though millions of Syrians are fleeing the very terrorists that Trump so fears, he says he'll kick any refugees out of the U.S. if elected. While nations like France, that just suffered a horrific ISIS attack, continue to take in thousands of refugees, Trump pretends that he's tough while recoiling in fear. I'm putting the people on notice that are coming here from Syria as part of this mass migration, that if I win, if I win, they're going back. They're going back. I'm telling you. Of course, this wasn't far enough for Trump supporters who demand the so-called Muslim problem be dealt with once and for all. Okay, this man, I like this guy. I walk on white plains. Amen. Okay. We have a problem in this country. It's called Muslims. We know our current president is one. Right. You know he's not even an American. We need this first question. Certificate this man. First question. But anyway, <laughs> we have training camps growing where they want to kill us. Mm -hmm. That's my question. When can we get rid of We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. It seems the presidential contender took the man's comments to heart, as Trump later called on mosques to be monitored and closed, and even suggested the implementation of a Muslim database. Oh, I would certainly implement that. Absolutely. There should be a lot of systems beyond database. I mean, we should have a lot of systems. And today you can do it. It would be just good management. What you have to do is good management procedures. Still, even with mainstream media outlets comparing Trump's policies to fascist dictators, he doubled down again, this time calling for a ban on all Muslims entering the U.S. for any reason. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on? We have no choice. We have no choice. And with that, Trump had apparently gone too far for even the Republican establishment, who quickly criticized the plan as unhinged and un-American. But despite the criticisms from other Republican presidential candidates, and GOP higher-ups, a majority of the party's voters say they agree with the plan. According to a recent Bloomberg politics poll, about 65% of Republicans support the proposed ban on Muslims entering the U.S. But Trump's fear-based campaign doesn't stop with bigotry and hate. At the same event in South Carolina, Trump called freedom of speech foolish and said parts of the internet should be closed. We're losing a lot of people because of the internet, and we have to do something. We have to go see Bill Gates and a lot of different people that really understand what's happening. We have to talk to them, maybe in certain areas, closing that internet up in some way. Somebody will say, oh, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. These are foolish people. We have a lot of foolish people. We have a lot of foolish people. We've got to maybe do something with the internet. Earlier this month, CNN political commentator Sally Khan summed up Trump's campaign perfectly. Quote, when you have a candidate that continues to say the demagogic things he's saying, 
and his support is maintained. And when you see a Black Lives Matter protester beaten during one of his rallies, and he said maybe he deserved to be roughed up. When a homeless immigrant is beaten by Trump supporters and Trump doesn't condemn that, but in fact says, well, my people are passionate. There's a word for this. It's fascism. And people need to remember Adolf Hitler, when he first rose to power, was elected by 36% of the German voters. She added that this is getting deeply disturbing and troublesome, not only for the Republican Party, but democracy, justice, and liberty. As a Canadian, I implore my friends and neighbors in the US to heed this warning. The world is looking on in shock as a dangerous bigot successfully continues his run for president of the United States. Some nations like Israel and the UK are even talking about banning Trump from their countries. In the UK, there's a government e-petition with more than 444,000 signatures that would do just that. While it's clear that Trump doesn't represent the majority of Americans, unfortunately he is everyone's problem. And if we don't call out Trump for the fascist, bigoted demagogue he is, the situation will only get worse. There's a very real possibility that Donald Trump could be the next US president. And unlike Syrian refugees, that truly is frightening.